Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Several months ago, I posted a video for an experimental ice dye, and I had several requests that I try another one. So I'm just now getting around to doing that, and I've changed the process just a little bit. I'll put a link down below to the original video, in case you're wondering which shirt I'm talking about. I do a lot of experimenting with tie-dyes. The shirt's been soaked in a soda ash solution, and it's just barely damp. I also have it turned inside out. To do the design on this shirt, I'm going to pick up small areas of the shirt and put them together in my hand. I try to make this as random as possible, but I'm also trying to avoid grabbing any areas that would be a little embarrassing in the chest area. I'm grabbing both layers of fabric at the same time. And once I have the shirt gathered together, I'm going to use a rubber band to hold the fabric together. Then I'm going around the edge to stuff or tuck a little bit of the fabric up underneath the rubber band. Just a few of the pieces of shirt that were hanging out that were too small for me to gather up into my hand. I don't know about you guys, but I have several dye colors that I don't use that often. They're colors that I just haven't really found anything to do with them yet. I've been trying to pull some of those colors and use them. Two of those colors are Watermelon and Flamingo Fantasy. Flamingo Fantasy was a special Dharma color that they had for a short season of time. And I bought a large container of it, but I just haven't used it that much. So I thought I would try it on this shirt. So to dye the shirt, I'm going to place it inside of a plastic pitcher, which I purchased from the dollar store. And then I cut the bottom out of the pitcher. So that will allow any of the liquid to flow through the shirt and out the bottom. And I put the area where I gathered up the shirt and tied the rubber band around it at the very bottom. So the more flat side is at the top and that's where I'm gonna apply the dye. Then I place the pitcher on top of a metal rack, which I have down inside of a plastic tub or container. It took me a few hours to get around to dyeing this shirt, so it's not totally damp anymore, but it's also not fully dry. All the colors that I'm gonna use on this shirt are Dharma Trading Company colors, and I'm gonna apply them kind of in wedges like I would if I were doing a spiral. I'm starting with Shiitake Mushroom, And across from the shiitake, I'm going to use gunmetal gray. I chose the shiitake and the gunmetal gray because they both have really cool color splits. So I thought paired with the watermelon and the flamingo fantasy, that would make a good combination. Then in the two remaining sections, I'm going to add the watermelon and flamingo fantasy. I haven't used either of these colors very often, partially because they're kind of orange shades and I normally don't migrate toward orange myself, but also because they are orange shades or lean more orange, I have to watch what I put them with so that I don't get a lot of brown on the shirt. Since orange is a secondary color, it has a tendency to form brown when it's mixed with another secondary color or even primary color. If I stick orange with blue, green, purple, any of those colors, it's gonna form brown. So really about the only thing that I ever use orange shades with is like yellow and pink and red. And I'm trying to find something new to do with this shade. I see other tie dyers who use orange a lot and I think their shirts look gorgeous, but it just seems to be a color that intimidates me more than others. Once I finished applying the dye, I added a little sprinkle of soda ash over the top and then a layer of ice. Because this is a pitcher, it's fairly tall and so I have quite a bit of space to place ice on the shirt. I came back after the ice melted and noticed that the shiitake mushroom and the flamingo fantasy seemed a little bit light. 
They looked okay from the top of the container, but when I looked at the side of the container, I could see that the color hadn't gone all the way through to the bottom. That's one of the advantages of using this clear pitcher to process the shirt in, is I could see down the sides of the shirt, and then I could lift up the container to look at the bottom if I wanted to. It also has a built-in ice barrier, which is really nice. So I added just a little bit more of those two colors and another layer of ice. Then I allowed the shirt to process for about 24 hours after the ice melted. And for part of that time, I placed this container outside where it was really, really hot. Then to rinse the shirt, I took it to my utility sink and I began rinsing it in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. I untied the shirt and rinsed it in hot water to try to rinse out any of the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. When the water was running almost clear, I put the shirt along with some textile detergent into my washing machine and washed it using a hot water cycle. Then after the shirt was washed and dried, this is what it looks like. Okay, so what do you guys think? I really like this one. I think this one turned out looking really cool. I like all the dye movement on the shirt. All of the areas that look like little flowers are all the places that I picked up and gathered in my hand. That's the center of them. I think the colors look really pretty together too. I actually like the watermelon and the flamingo on this shirt. I like that pop of color. It's not that I don't like the colors, I just don't know how to use them. But I think this shirt was a great way to use them. I think they blend really well with the gunmetal and the shiitake. As I mentioned earlier, both gunmetal and shiitake have really cool color splits, and they didn't disappoint on this shirt. I like some of the different variations of gray. There are some other colors that came out, you know, some more brown type colors. And I just really think that it flows well with the two brighter colors. This one definitely has a very watercolor feel to it, and I really like that. I just think it's a really pretty shirt. I was super excited when I opened it up and saw how pretty it was. I dyed this shirt a little bit differently than I did the other one that I was referring to at the beginning of the video. That shirt I muck dyed, and I think it turned out looking really cool, but didn't quite have the same exact effect. This one is kind of more like a tall, deep scrunch shirt with a very definite flower vibe. Like I said, overall, I just really like this shirt. I think it looks really pretty. And if you guys have enjoyed the video, I sure would appreciate it if you would like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a great day.